In this video, I'm going to explain the cable sizing calculator of Cable Pro Web. This calculator I'm showing you is for the Australian and New Zealand cable sizing standard AS-NZS3008, which is applicable for low voltages up to 1kV AC or 1.5kV DC. All the cable types, installation methods, and derating factors from the standard are included. There are references to the tables and columns used from the standard in the results and the reports. As you can see, the user interface is divided into several logical input sections and a result section. Firstly, we'll look at the load section. The load of the equipment is entered as a current, power, or horsepower. You can enter very large loads and the software will automatically calculate the cable size or you can fix the cable size and number of parallel conductors to check compliance. The load current is used for the minimum current rating of the cable and for determining the actual voltage drop. Power factor of the load is entered here and affects voltage drop. Note that power factor has a big impact on voltage drop for large cable sizes and not so much on small cable sizes. A derating factor can be entered and this is multiplied by the standard current rating of the selected cable size. Derating factors are used for when your actual installation conditions differ from the standard conditions assumed by the standard. There is a button called Derating Wizard which opens a window to help you work out the derating factors for your installation. I'll explain this one later. Next up is the supply section. The phases can be selected as single phase, three phase, DC or two phase. This selection will affect cable size and voltage drop calculations. It will also change some of the options available in the other sections. Changing phases will update the voltage input. There are default voltages for each of the phase settings. For example, 230 volts for single phase. Additionally, these default voltages can be changed in settings. Voltage drop is entered as a percentage of the supply voltage. This is the maximum allowed voltage drop and changing this input may determine the final cable size. You can switch between voltage drop or voltage rise calculations. This doesn't really change the calculations but affects the wording of the load current and the wording in the reports. The length of run is the distance from the cable supply to the load which affects the voltage drop calculations you can enter very long cable runs into the software. Fault level is the prospective fault current level at the point of supply of the cable, which affects the short circuit rating of the cable. The resultant cable size is the minimum size to withstand the fault current. Note that it is meant to be the actual fault level for the installation and not the rated breaking capacity of the circuit breaker. It can be quite difficult to get an accurate value for fault level, but it should be provided by the power authority. Sometimes confusing results are seen for very small cable sizes when the length of run is short and the fault level is overly high. In these cases, the fault level can be the dictating factor for minimum cable size. To check, just reduce the fault level. Moving on to the cable inputs. All the insulation types are available, including PVC, XLPE, fire rated, flexible cords, mineral insulated, and aerial cables or conductors. From the conductor drop-down you can select copper, copper flexible, or aluminium conductors. From the cores menu you can select single core or multi-core cables. Your selections in supplying cable will affect the installation table, which is the next section. The available installation methods are displayed in the center of the screen. The table number from the standard and from which the installation methods are taken is displayed for reference. Most inputs allow cables to be installed in air, unenclosed or enclosed, exposed to sun, surrounded by thermal insulation, buried direct, or buried in ducts. Whenever the installation method is changed, or any input is changed, then the cable size results are instantly updated here in the results section. Now let's have a look at the derating wizard. Once the installation method has been selected, it's a good time then to use the derating wizard to calculate the derating factor. There are two different sequences of steps with the derating wizard depending on whether the cables are installed in air or buried. Notice if I switch to another installation method, then the derating wizard changes. I will use the buried installation as an example. Stepping through the derating wizard windows, you will be asked to complete each section. If the installation conditions of your project differ from the standard conditions, then a derating factor will be calculated for each condition. At the end of the wizard, an overall derating factor will be calculated and updated in the main window. The complete results for derating factors will be added to the final report. 
the protection section provides an important set of inputs. There are different devices available, including MCBs, HRC fuses, adjustable MCCBs, and ACB devices, as well as custom devices. For an adjustable device like the MCCB, the rating is the nominal trip rating and thermal setting is the actual current trip setting of the device, which should be less than or equal to the trip rating. The rating or thermal setting of the selected device must be greater than the load current in order to be able to properly protect the cable. The rating or thermal setting will also be used to calculate the minimum cable current rating. Note that if the protective device is unknown, then the earth cable size will be based on table 5.1 from AS-NZS3000. Otherwise, earth size will be based on fault loop impedance from the protective device settings. The fault time is the time required for the protective device to trip during a short circuit condition, and is used for calculating the short circuit rating of the cables. The trip multiplier is a characteristic of the protective device and is set by default, but should be taken from the manufacturer datasheet. The trip current is the current required to cause the device to trip within the specified earth fault time, and is equal to the rating multiplied by the trip multiplier. A residual current device can also be added that will further affect the fault loop impedance of the circuit. Next, let's look at the cable size results. The cable size results are updated live with every change you make. The minimum active size is automatically calculated along with the number of circuits. The active size and the number of circuits can also be set manually, and compliance will be checked. The spare capacity is the difference between the current carrying capacity of the circuits as per the standard, and the protective device rating. Neutral size is automatic or can be manually set for multi-phase circuits. Earth size is automatically calculated based on fault loop impedance and short circuit current. The earth size can be specified and can also be turned off. The actual voltage drop is shown and should be less than the voltage drop limit under the supply section. If it isn't, it will be highlighted in red. The fault loop impedance is also shown, and if it is an issue, it will be highlighted in red too. Conduit size is calculated and shown for any installation methods which are in conduits. Under the Details tab, you will find more information which you can check. The Details tab can be accessed from the Output section. The standard table and column number references for current rating and those for voltage drop can be seen in this section. Short circuit currents which are calculated are given under short circuit performance. Additionally, details about the fault loop impedance calculations are provided. It's easy to generate a detailed report. You can include your own company logo in the reports by uploading an image using the settings menu. You can email the report to one or several colleagues, customers, and so on. You can generate the PDF report and download it onto your computer. The report includes all your inputs, the results including pass or fail, as well as all of the details of the derating factor calculations, and table number and column number references to the standards. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please check out our other tutorials for Cable Pro Web.